There were more than 200 passengers and crew aboard the California Zephyr when it collided with the truck. And joining us now from Reno, Nevada, are two of those passengers, Linda and Clayton Cook. Great to have both of you with us. Uh, thank goodness you're able to join us after such a traumatic event. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Linda, what did it feel like when the truck made impact into your train? It felt like the whole train was rocking side to side and we were worried that it was actually going to derail. And then it did it continue. Scary. Yeah, very scary. It did continue then for about a mile. Uh, going at a top speed, what was going through your mind as all of this took place? It was very scary. We, we thought that we were going to maybe possibly perish ourselves, and so <laughs> I was pretty afraid. <laughs> Clayton, when the train did eventually come to a stop, passengers, you and fellow passengers, made your way to the end of the train. You were able to get off. Was it an orderly exit? Um, it was surprisingly orderly. Is that because um, people uh, everyone, got together and helped out? Yes, yeah, so they were very supportive of each other of the elderly, of the people who were injured, and uh, they, they were very, um, it was very, uh, it was surprisingly or orderly. It's nice to see when people can come together in situations like this. When you were off the train, Clayton, and you're looking back at the remains, what, what did you see? What was going through your mind? Well, when I looked at, uh, toward the train, I, I, all I saw was uh, um, a lot of smoke, that, and, uh, and I knew it was on fire. Then I looked toward the intersection, and there was a lot of smoke coming from uh, where the truck had uh, hit the train. But I think the scariest part is looking across the train and out the windows and seeing the wall of flames um, just on the other side of the train and, and not knowing um, whether we should um, exit the train and remain seated or, uh, or what was going to happen next. So there wasn't any sort of uh, security measure or anyone saying to you, this is what you need to do right now. You went back to the back of that train on your own and in your own mind. That was the smartest decision at the time. Well, the first, the first instinct was to get our belongings and exit the train. As we were leaving, we were instructed to just remain calm and be seated. So we did go back to our seat and collect the rest of our belongings. And then um, we saw the, that the smoke was coming toward us um, <clears throat> from the car ahead of us. And we decided on our own to start heading to the back of the train when, um, when the, they instructed us to just keep moving back. And we were instructed to go to the back of the train and then uh, eventually to exit the train and walk toward the intersection. Lyndon, Clayton, Cook, we appreciate both of you joining us. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you.